Okay, up next we have Anita Rao. Anita is coming to the stage right now. Welcome. Anita is the director at PayPal. She has over 15 years of experience in various leadership roles across high tech, financial services, and payment card industries. So if this industry of finance and payments interests you, you've got a wonderful speaker coming up next. She is currently at PayPal, where she's led the product and engineering teams that they deliver data products and solutions. And before that, she was at eBay Incorporated as the chief product owner, and also has had the role of vice president and head of global finance systems at Visa Incorporated, many brands, all of which I'm sure you've heard of. So welcoming her here, Anita, to talk about strategies to stay relevant, something that's like very, I think, relevant, relevant to say relevant topic for a lot of us. Um, We'll just let you kick it off, Anita. So happy to have you here. Thank you, Margaret, for that kind introduction. It's truly an honor and a privilege to be with everyone today, especially during these challenging times. So I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes sharing with you my journey and what has worked for me, as well as leave you with some thoughts and strategies for staying relevant. Uh, feel free to post your questions in the comment section, and I'll try to spend the last five minutes addressing your questions. So with that, let's get started. A little bit about my journey. I was born in India and I grew up there. I did my undergrad there and then came to the US to do my graduate studies. Back then when I came, it, it was a very different world and culturally the two countries are very different. Coming from a third world country, I had to make a lot of adjustments, especially the things that we take for granted today that I personally take for granted today. Just to give you some examples, a family member had to sit me down and show me this is a quarter, this is a dollar, this is the currency. He educated me about the currency. And then when I went for my first grocery uh, shopping trip, I was overwhelmed first by the size of the grocery stores, and secondly, I did not know which cereal box to pick up or which milk was right for me. 1%, 2%. Why do they have these percentages? Then when I had to go out and start driving, I had to get a driver's license. I found that here we drive on the wrong side of the road. So I had to learn the signs and learn to drive on the wrong side of the road. Today, when I go back to India, I say, you guys drive on the wrong side of the road. And finally, uh, when I gr was growing up, uh, our parents handled our finances. And so I had never done my own banking or opened a bank account or written a check. So I had to learn those basics and to, to take care of myself and be able to sustain. So you get the picture. It was a very different world. Now, I came to the U.S. I went to Rutgers to do my graduate studies. Early on in, in my studies, I was influenced by a professor who still, I remember his class. It was a database structured class. And the professor was so good, it introduced me to technology and I slowly got sucked into it. I started taking more classes in programming and et cetera. So I was very, very interested. And that's how I got into high tech. Um, thereafter, I, I've kept my education going. I've taken classes at Berkeley and at Stanford, some certification classes, and I've kept abreast with the changes. Over the course of my career, I worked at the names of the companies that you would recognize on the screen, Oracle, Visa, Symantec, and currently I'm at PayPal. I started in my journey with client server technologies and we moved to the web and then Java. And during this journey, I spent a lot of time building uh, and working with data. So I built the traditional data warehouse at Oracle with analytical applications on it. And then gradually as technology progressed and moved, I moved on to Hadoop, uh, big data, and then I learned AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning at PayPal. I filed five patents in the data realm. So that's a little bit about my journey from the career perspective. I was blessed. During this journey, I had good role models whom I learned from. They were very helpful, and they helped me. 
But one thing I followed right from the beginning of my career was to give back. When I started working, I said, I feel so blessed. I need to help. At that time, as as somebody who's in the early career stage, I wasn't very sure. I was very confused. I said, what would somebody want to know from me or learn from me? Then I went and I volunteered in the inner city school during my lunch hour. And I sat with kids to encourage them to read. So I would sit during my lunch hour and I would read to them. So that's that's when I started. I said, there is always something somebody can, can learn from you. So my uh, request to all of you in the audience is, um, no matter what stage of your career you're at, you have something special that you can share with people and where people can benefit from you. You can teach somebody something, whatever that may be, but take the time to give back because if you are in this conference, we are blessed. We are we are fortunate and we have been given certain experiences to us. So let's share those and let's give back. Um, I remember uh, Madeleine Albright's quote where she said, there is a special place in hell for women who do not help women, especially because we are in a technical field. There are so few women role models. So it, it is really helpful that if you have been uh, blessed to help other women and bring them along. At PayPal, for four years, I ran the outreach program, which was to influence middle school and high school girls from inner city schools to give them exposure to technology, give them exposure to what a career in technology would be like, and that anyone can strive to uh, build a career in technology only if you work hard. So um, we, we, it helped hopefully to influence those girls because they, that's a very impressionable age in middle and high school where we help them to pick careers in technology at, during, you know, for their education as well. So that's a little bit about myself and my journey. What thought does this picture of a dinosaur trigger in your mind? Reflect on this. Where are the dinosaurs today? They're extinct. They are no more. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what you can do with your career so that you do not end up as a dinosaur. And there is only one skill that you need to stay relevant throughout your career. Think about that. What do you think that is? It's learning agility. There is only one skill that you need to stay relevant, and that is the ability to learn. Things are changing dramatically. There is so much evolution, revolution, call it what you want. Changes are happening. No matter which industry you're in, whether you're in healthcare and high tech or retail, or any industry, things are rapidly evolving. Things are rapidly changing, specifically in high tech. That's why you only need one skill to be successful. And the skill is the ability to learn. You have to learn how to learn. That's a, also a skill. You know, so when I talk to uh, recent college grads and I tell them, you know, you don't want, want to end up as a dinosaur in five years, they looked at me as if to say, I'm crazy. I'm like, no, if you do not take action now, you will end up in that, uh, in that situation before you know it. So take the time to learn. So, and, and what I tell students in, and for early stage um, yeah, women is make sure you have learned and mastered the skill to learn. That's all you need because things will change around you as long as you're flexible, you're adaptable, and you know how to learn the new uh, technologies and new evolutions, new uh, inventions, you will be fine. So this is a very important skill that we all need to have. Today, it has become fairly easy to learn. Look around you. There are massive open online courses available for free. Yes, you can't beat that price. It's free. 
So you can go anywhere on the internet. You can learn whatever topic you want, and you can learn at your own convenience, at your own time for as long as you want. And as uh, you can go as deep as you want on a specific topic. So make the most of it. It has become so convenient. It's just at the click of a button on your computer. So make the most of it and try to be disciplined about it. That's the key is select the right classes for you in that is relevant for your area, for your topic, and be disciplined about it. Make sure that you invest the time to learn and grow uh, uh, your skills. That's very, very important. I can't stress enough about this. Next, it's take the time to think. All of us, myself included, I'm guilty. We are attached to our devices. We are slaves to our devices. We are always connected and we are always scrolling our screens. We are checking our email. We're checking our devices. And there's a barrage of information being hurled at us by marketeers and others. We do not disconnect. It's very important to have downtime, to disconnect be creative. That's when you do your real good creative thinking. When you disconnect is when you're truly productive. It increases and enhances your productivity. You can reflect on certain problems. You disconnect, do some deep thinking. You'll come back with a solution. So take the time to disconnect. And I encourage all the young people to do that as well, because they're so into their uh, social media and likes and comments and shares, etc. It's OK, but but have some discipline so that you carve out some thinking time. I call it thinking time where you can do your best work without interruptions from social media. I'm going to leave you with some strategies to stay relevant, and I'll cover these one at a time. So we talked about the MOOCs. These are your massive online open uh, courses available for you at any topic. And, you know, even the universities now post their lectures. If you are interested in just learning without earning a degree, that's fine. Just go and take those classes. So make the most of that. Next, if you are working in a particular field, my suggestion to you is make a list of the top influencers, the top people who, who are masters in that field. And those are the influencers. You can follow them online, on social media and other areas, and you learn from them. See what they post, they share, what they are talking about, and then read up on that, and you'll find that you learn so much. Your, your knowledge will grow. So make the most of the, in, uh, the knowledge that the influencers have and what they share. Then I talk about the five-hour rule. There is a saying, and some successful people have followed this, is, if you don't invest a minimum of five hours per week to learn a new skill, you will get outdated. You will become that dinosaur. I know it sounds scary when I say that to young people, especially those who have graduated. They, they think like, I'm done with my studies. Now I'm going to work. No, you're not done. You're never done with your education. So make sure you're disciplined. You have the rigor and you block time on your schedule to learn a new skill. Whatever that skill be, you decide. You, in, you pick that topic. You pick how you're going to absorb that knowledge, whether it's through a podcast or whatever, and make sure you absorb that knowledge. Next is news feeds. There are so many news feeds. For, you know, there are publications. They have daily, weekly, monthly, uh, quarterly news articles, etc. So again, here, be disciplined about sub subscribing to the ones that are relevant for your vocation, for your area of work, and, and read up about them. Read as much as you can. You learn and grow from that experience. Um, you know, you if, if you feel that during the week you have too much going and carve time on the weekend for catch up. I sometimes do that is I carve time on the weekend to catch up on what I have missed reading during the week. So subscribe to news feeds. Next is publishing. All of us can write and publish. 
you don't have to be an author to do that. And it has become so easy and convenient these days. There are blogs you can publish using Medium. You can write an article and post it on your LinkedIn feed. So there are ways and opportunities to share. You can write a short blog in about 1,200 words or 400 words, whatever is convenient for you. But start writing about it because what happens is when you're learning something and you're working in it with something, when you write about it, it solidifies, it reinforces forces your learning. And once you publish, people read about your uh, ideas and then they might comment and connect with you and share their ideas with you. So you can get, learn different perspectives. You can share your perspective. It's a great way to grow. And overall, the community grows when you do that as well. So take the time, be disciplined and do that. And finally, network. I can't stress enough about the power of networking. Even during the pandemic, you can have virtual coffees with people. You can reach out to people. You can you know, uh, connect with them online. And make sure when you do network, you always offer something first. So don't just network for the sake of asking for things offer something. If you know somebody is interested in a particular area and you come across an article, share it with them and say, I thought of you when I read this and I thought this might be of interest to you. So always keep that flow going. Network with people. Um, it is important to be a lifelong learner in this way. So you know, we are getting towards the end of the year. I'm sure a lot of you are pulling, uh, putting together your New Year's resolutions. Take the time, reflect on what I have shared and see if how you can form your uh, annual goals, your quarterly goals, monthly goals along these areas so that you learn, you grow and you flourish. Good luck to all of you with your careers. Any questions? Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to, let's see you nice and big here, Anita. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we do have some people writing in the chat, very long messages, which we'll let you kind of take a look at and pop in after. But some people saying that that last slide really helpful for them and helps make an impact on their development both personally and professionally. So you've certainly hit the nail on the head there, Anita, and people are resonating with it. Thank you so much, Margus. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.